Hello, and welcome to our fifth, and sadly, our final, Green Plum Summit 2020 live broadcast. Again, thank you all for making the choice to be here. All of the feedback regarding these sessions continues to be incredibly positive. And today we will continue these conversations, sharing knowledge globally around modernizing your data strategy with the best and the only open source data analytics platform. And we've been here at 9 a.m. Pacific every other Wednesday since July for our reimagined digital customer conference. And if this is your first time joining, let me be the first to welcome you. I'm your MC, and for those of you who do not know me, my name is Jacques Eistock. I'm the Vice President of Data here at VMware Tanzu, and I've been a member of the Greenplum team now since way back in 2007. Every other week, we've been diving into one main topic with a handful of sessions around that topic, delivered by subject matter experts, users, customers, and partners. Taking a quick look at those topics, our first session on the 29th was Green Plum Your Way, Bare Metal, VMs, Kubernetes, In the Public Cloud, or all of the above. In our next session, we talked about federated analytics, wrangling business insight from disparate systems and the power of Greenplum's reach for data both inside of Greenplum as well as data outside of Greenplum. And then we went straight over to data warehouse modernization and how you can use the innovations within Greenplum to really up-level your warehousing game. Last summit, we talked about parallel Postgres, community innovation showcases and internals so everything open source, everything Postgres, the basic building block that is Greenplum. And of course, today is AI, neural networks, and the future of analytics. Also note, those past sessions were all recorded, and they can be found on the VMware Learning Zone. No registration required. That's vmwarelearningzone.vmware.com. In addition to my great roster of speakers today, I'm joined by our data architecture subject matter expert and uh, Greenplum guru, John Roberts, who's going to be monitoring the Q&A box. Please use this for any questions that you have. We've also enabled the chat box so that he can amplify key messages, but don't be shy to have a chat with him. Just note that the activity on chat can be pretty busy, so please, if you have direct questions, put them into the Q&A box and we'll get those answered. And, and if you have further questions, we can always continue this conversation on our open to the public Greenplum Slack channel. Next slide. So let me start with this definitive statement. Greenplum is the one platform that can power your analytics needs both now and in the future and most importantly, on every infrastructure where you have data and where you need to do analysis. Next slide. And we've been doing this by redefining what the data platform is, allowing Greenplum to be the single tool to analyze all of your data, both structured and unstructured, allowing you to simplify for both efficiency as well as cost. It allows you to examine data everywhere on the network without necessitating a lot of costly and slow ETL or ELT. Next slide. So, so what exactly is Greenplum? We'll level set here. Greenplum is based off of the popular open source database Postgres. It's really an enhanced version of Postgres. And then we turn that into a massively parallel database where we bring many of these Postgres instances together and they act as one cohesive database that can solve your analytics questions much, much faster. The combination of these two things makes us a true hybrid transaction analytical processing or HTAP system. And with all this infrastructure, we can get all the compute, the network, the storage together and create a massive compute grid, which gives us the ability to do true high performance computing. And you can do the high-performance computing using languages such as Python or R or Java, these languages that a lot of data scientists are inherently most familiar with. 
And we recognize that not all of your data is going to reside within Greenplum. So we provide a federated query engine with the ability to query and aggregate data from any different source that Greenplum can actually access on the network. And the format of that data could be either structured or semi-structured, which makes Greenplum an excellent choice as an enterprise search platform, which you'll hear more about today. And um, above all these capabilities, Greenplum continues to strive to be a great analytics database. And we combine technologies such as graph, geospatial, text analytics, time series, and image recognition, all powered by the power of open source. Next slide. And looking at this depicted graphically, you can actually see that many Postgres databases across an unlimited cluster of machines and a high-speed network to connect them all together allows us to be the number one open source data warehouse in the world. And at the bottom, you can see how this powerful cluster can actually in parallel ingest or stream data through the Greenplum engine itself, allowing for even greater flexibility and simplifying your data ecosystem. Next slide. Greenplum's innovative approach to analytics allows our platform to do data transformation and traditional BI, as well as these advanced things, as I said before, like text, geospatial graph, machine learning, even deep learning, all in one platform. So you may ask, how do we do this? Next slide. It's with another open source project called Apache Madlib, a scalable in-database analytics library. And these analytics run in database on either Greenplum or Postgres. That means you don't need to move data out of the database. You can run machine learning in a separate execution engine then that means you don't have to do that. That means you don't have to run machine learning in a separate engine and then move the results back into the database. Instead, the main advantage of Madlib on Greenplum is doing analytics on large data sets that are within Greenplum. So we focus on scalability and we focus on performance. Next slide. Apache Madlib was originally created by us uh, back in 2011 in concert with UC Berkeley and with a bunch of participation from Stanford, University of Wisconsin-Madison, University of Florida, and others. So what we really see is great collaboration between industry and academia. Next slide. And there's more than 50 machine learning, graph, math, and statistical functions within Madlib. And you may recognize many of the popular ones here, such as was your regressions, decision trees, neural networks, k-means clusterings, et cetera. It's a comprehensive, it's a mature data science library that can be used to solve a whole variety of real world use cases. And we're gonna hear more about those today. Next slide. Just take a look at this comprehensive set of function. It's, it's, it's mind blowing, simply amazing what you can do uh, with Apache Madlib and with Greenplum. And so, so you may ask yourself, why should I use Apache Madlib? Next slide. It's really all about distributed computing and parallelism. The algorithms within Madlib are designed to leverage an MPP architecture to run models against massive amounts of data and to do that in parallel, which is something you just can't do in either single node Postgres or even other vendor or open source tools. We spend a ton of time thinking about scalability when building these Madlib algorithms, which means you have better predictive accuracy. You can use all of your data instead of just a sample of it. And that's important for uh, data scientists that are dealing with certain features with high cardinality, right? Like uh, user ID, for example. And also note that this is a top level Apache Foundation open source project, which means it leverages community-driven development uh, as well as improvement. Next slide. Our, innovated, our innovative and integrated approach in leveraging parallel Postgres gives this modern open source, massively parallel data analytics platform that runs natively across all infrastructures, bare metal, both the public and private clouds, including Kubernetes, and can wrangle 
uh, data, regardless of where it's uh, where it lives, that is what makes up Greenplum. So now, without further ado, let's get started. 